Okay, yep. Yeah, close <laughs> is good, and we're going. Hey, welcome back to Mobility Wad. We got a call for an email from uh, one of our Leopard Legion who's asking us, hey, can you talk about hypermobility? So, one of the things that's important that we understand is that if I have a theory that's correct, or an organizational concept or a construct, it has to be scalable. It has to be scalable from the lowest level of performance to the most elite level of performance. It has to work from children to Olympic gold medalists. It has to scale across injuries. It has to incorporate all those things. If there's some piece of my integration or some piece of my idea that doesn't fit that schema, I've got to discard it and figure out what's wrong with my schema. So here's the deal. We have Gilly here, who I've known for years, super coach, head coach, super strong athlete. You were a volleyball player mm -hmm. in college? Yep. So, she's pretty awesome. Okay, so here's the deal. One of the things that, is that and we've known for Gilly for a long time, is that she is hypermobile. And what's asked is, how do we deal with hypermobility in the mobility-wide concept? So when we talk about the hypermobile, M-O-B-I-L-E, the hypermobile amongst us, what we want to understand is that we have four concepts of four systems we're dealing with. When we look at an athlete's problem, first, is motor control. And what we want to understand is that we're always fixing the movement first. Now, for a hypermobile low back, particularly when we end up running into our problems, the issue is that we usually are focusing on what we call butt and gut. And people understand this. They're like, hey, first I've got to squeeze my butt as hard as I can. Boom. But sets position. Now with the butt set position, all of my musculature and tissues are going to turn on. We did a mobility wide in Australia about the pelvic floor. Well, it turns out your diaphragm doesn't work very well if you're overextended or in a bad position. Your pelvic floor doesn't work very well. The body of basic, basic, simple principle that if you're in a bad position, it doesn't work. If you're in a good position, it does work. I call this positional inhibition. So, Gilly squeezes her butt as hard as she can. Boom! Now she's set. She's organized her position. Now, abs can brace position. Now, this is where we traditionally have stopped the conversation. But there's a third element of spinal stabilization when you talk about, and that's the rotation of the torso. By screwing your feet into the ground, boop, and you saw the femur come off tension, do it again, and come on tension, that torsion in the hip, come off tension, back on tension, boop, that is the third construct. That hip capsule, that rotator cuff pulls that pelvis into the straight up and down position. She has back tension off her butt now, and now her abs have to work less hard to buffer that position, and that's what you feel. And you can test this at home. In yoga, they call this Tadasana and standing. But really what we're talking about is that there are three constructs. First, butt sets position. Now, abs can brace position. And then third is poop. Pelvis is locked into place through the torsion. So when she's squatting, it's really incumbent that, ah, she creates that torsion in that bottom position. Go ahead and do that again. And knees out, knees out. And you can see it. She's not very comfortable. And her knees are wobbling back and forth because she doesn't understand where that bottom position is. And so when she loses that stability through the hip, she defaults to this forward position. Hamstrings insert onto that big bone in the pelvis, and we are fooling ourselves as we think that the, the hip flexors and the psoas are going to pull and resist what? The hamstrings? There's no way. Look at this girl's hamstrings. No, don't look at it. That's pervy. So don't be creepy. So here's the deal. We need to create that torsion in the hip that blocks it so her hamstrings have something off of which to pull. Otherwise, she's going to have to counter from the bottom. One of the cues that we do in the bottom, go ahead and sit in that bottom position, shove your knees out, and then I need that toe on the ground so she can create torsion. She's screwing her feet into the ground. We shove the knee out as hard as we can. Now lift your knees off your elbows. Boom. And now she's rock solid in that, that position. And we will just train our athletes to be a little bit tighter in this bottom position so they feel what that's like. Go ahead and keep your knee out. If your knee comes in, we're going to kill a kick. Bam! No knee wobbles. So the first and foremost when we have the hypermobile is that we work on motor control. Second aspect is we work on our sliding surfaces. Sliding surfaces are okay to smash. It's okay, we're looking at fascia, we're looking at connective tissue. As Gilly is standing here, feet are straight, she's creating 20% of her torsion, she's got 20% of her abs on all the time. Fair game, where we take the, the schema and change it for hypermobile athletes is we don't work on joint capsules. The joint capsule is out for my dancers, it's out for my gymnasts, it's out for my hypermobiles. When I have ehlers danlos connective tissue disorders, anything, pregnancy, we don't yank on the, on the tissues for, is that we do not go after muscle dynamics. So this muscle dynamic, where I take a muscle to end range and pull on the insertion, is out. So with our hypermobile athletes, their excuse from any band distraction, what we get is, you better be in a good position, stable all the time, prioritize that stability, and if we need to smash on something, we smash on something. So with Gilly, we work on 
ball gut smashing. We get our QL. We have her work on torsion, and then we. Mark Bell has this little fun little band he has created. He calls it the circle, but maybe it's the circle of pain. Put it on your knees. That looks like a monster band concept. And all I'm doing is cueing that bottom position. Now, let me be clear. There's nothing weak about this girl. There's nothing weak. This is not a weakness problem. This is I have no idea where my brain is supposed to do problem. This is a software wiring problem, not a strength problem. Create the torsion. Whoop. Ah, now she's in a good position. She shoves her knee that harder, harder, harder. Tear that band apart. You coward. Come on, tough it out. Harder, harder. Now I've got a cue for her jumping mechanics, her power cleans, and just getting her here. Of course, she can walk around, but that's the issue, is that we're using this not to shove the knees out. What are we trying to do? Create torsion. Create torsion through the hip. So the cue of screw your feet into the ground is not a cue. We want to screw the hip into the ground. The idea is you can be in a better position, more stable. All of this goes away. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>